AI didn't take over overnight. There was no big announcement, no launch day that you could mark on a calendar. It just slipped in. A new feature here, a smart suggestion there, an assistant that learns your habits. One update at a time, automation has become part of everything we do, down to even ordering dog food. What's weird is that most of us didn't even notice. I'm not gonna start talking about how robots are going to start replacing people. So, uh, you guys are my new coworkers. So, working hard or hardly working? <laughs> but instead, let's talk about how people stopped realizing that machines are quietly running more and more of our world. Like most tech revolutions, it started with a promise to make our lives easier. AI would eliminate the repetitive work and automation would save you time so you could go do more of the fun stuff. Smart systems that would help us focus on what really matters. And for a while, it worked. Emails started drafting themselves and photos started to get organized automatically by the people and objects in them. Meetings started to get scheduled by algorithms. Efficiency skyrocketed. But then as our tools got smarter, we got quieter. Because when everything works automatically and does a pretty good job, you stop asking questions about how. A few years ago, AI was something you used intentionally. You tried ChatGPT, you tested MidJourney, you knew you were using AI. But now it's invisible and it's sneaky. Sneaky devil. Every major platform like Microsoft, Apple, Google, they're quietly hiding AI in everything. Those email drafts are written with predictive algorithms and those photos are enhanced by machine learning. Your operating system tracks behavior to anticipate what you're going to do next. It's seamless and subtle and that's the problem. The line between me and machine used to be really obvious, but now it's blurred by design. AI doesn't need to influence you, it just needs your attention. Every suggestion, every recommended result, every autocomplete, it's all guided by algorithms that learn from your behavior and shape your choices. It's not malicious, it's just math. Math can manipulate just as easily as it can measure. We only think we're choosing freely, but most of the time we're choosing between the options that AI gave us. That's the shift. Technology isn't reacting to us anymore, it's directing and guiding us. The more automation we add, the less we think. We used to memorize things like phone numbers and drive with maps and plan our days manually, but now we delegate everything to our devices. And while it sounds harmless, there's a hidden consequence. Every time a machine takes over a task, it takes a little bit of our understanding with it. Operate Manuel. Uh, Manuel, relay instructions. Manuel. And a little bit of that brain power we used to have. When you let AI write an email, you lose your tone, you lose your voice, and what makes your emails sound like they came from you, a human being. When it edits your photos, you lose your eye, and lose a little bit of your creativity. And when it plans your day, you can lose your rhythm. Just because AI schedules your meetings during the afternoons doesn't mean it fits your natural flow. Maybe you're more of a morning person. Well, I am a morning person. I hope you mean morning with a you. Automation hasn't just streamlined our lives, it's slowly de-skilling us. For businesses, AI was supposed to be the ultimate advantage. Predictive analytics, automated support, smarter decisions, but most companies didn't adopt AI, AI adopted them. It's now worked its way into CRMs and productivity tools, communication platforms, all things that businesses use as key parts of their operations. Data is then collected, processed, and fed back into models that most organizations don't even understand. We've created workflows that are so dependent on automation that if the AI layer breaks, so does the business. This isn't the future, this is happening now. And here's the irony. The more we automate, the more data we give away. To train AI to help us, we have to let it see everything and let it learn from us. Let it see the emails, let it see the conversations, documents, patterns, all of it. And then it's all collected, processed, and stored securely, whatever that means. We think AI is private because it feels personal, but personalization and privacy are opposites. Think about that. I mean, most companies adopting AI have no idea where their data actually goes or who has access to it once it's uploaded. We talk a lot about AI taking jobs, but the real danger isn't job loss, it's skill loss. When AI drafts every email, calculates every budget, or creates a presentation, you start to forget how to do those things yourself. 
and eventually you stop questioning the results. Businesses are already seeing it. Employees are relying on AI suggestions without verifying them. And when everything just works, no one really double checks. That's complacency disguised as progress. AI promises control, that's its entire pitch. The more insight, more automation, more visibility, but what it's really doing is shifting control, not eliminating it. We used to control our tools directly. Now we guide systems that interpret what we might want. You tell your assistant to summarize that email. You tell your CRM to predict next month's sales, but you ever ask how it knows? The more we rely on automation, the less we actually understand it, and you can't control what you don't understand. What makes this moment so weird is that we built AI to make us more human, to free us up from that repetitive work and to give us more time to create and think, to enjoy more time with family, or maybe take those guitar lessons you've always wanted to take. But instead of freeing us, it's filling every gap we leave behind. AI is writing, creating, designing, and responding faster than ever. And we're letting it. I mean, have you seen some of the stuff Sora's coming up with? Hey, Ma'am, reason for the stop is your speed back there. Could I see your license, I'm please? I'm in rather a hurry, officer. I understand, but I still Do need- forgive me. Ma'am, ma'am, dispatch, vehicles fleeing, green Range Rover, plate Romeo, Oski, Yankee, what? It's not because AI is better at any of this stuff. It's because it can be easier to have AI do it. The invisible shift wasn't just technological, it's more psychological. We stopped asking, can AI do this? And started assuming, why shouldn't it? It does everything else. AI isn't all bad and automation isn't the enemy. The danger isn't in what AI can do, it's in what we stop doing because of it. Businesses that use AI thoughtfully as an assistant and not an operator will thrive. Individuals who use it to accelerate thinking, not replace it, will stay valuable. But the moment we stop understanding how it works or why we're using it, we lose the most important part of progress, choice. So AI didn't take our jobs, our privacy, or our creativity. We handed them over one click at a time. We were never forced to, but it was easier to just let it happen. We really wanted to go on that vacation or take that long lunch. It suited us better to let AI do the tasks we didn't like rather than just doing the work ourselves. The shift isn't about machines replacing people. It's about people quietly outsourcing their own thinking. And if we keep doing that, the smartest systems in the world will make us better. They'll just make us forget who was supposed to be in control. Thanks for watching. AI is here and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Do you think we've crossed that line between using AI as a tool and letting it quietly run the show? Or do you think it's helping us get back some of the time we've lost? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, don't forget to hit subscribe. We've got a lot more to talk about.